Hello guys, uh, welcome to my first video. Here we are going to tackle the most basic question, which is what is physics? Now the most standard answer to this question is that physics is a branch of science which studies nature and its laws. Now, what exactly are the laws of nature? The laws of nature are completely mathematical, which includes the Newton's laws of motion, Newton's law of gravitation, Then we have the various laws of thermodynamics. We have the laws of electrodynamics. Then we have Einstein's theory of special relativity and general relativity. We have the theory of quantum mechanics, etc. Now, physicists don't stop right there. Physicists don't stop at just explaining what we can observe around us, but they also like to predict particles which have not even been detected experimentally and there are several great examples for that uh, for example we have Wolfgang Pauli who predicted the neutrino even before it was discovered we have Paul Dirac who had predicted the antimatter. Then we have uh, Peter Higgs, who predicted obviously the Higgs boson, also known as the God particle. And not only these particles, which could have been detected in the future, physicists also like to predict stuff which may just not be possible to detect experimentally. We may never be able to detect these stuff experimentally. For example, we have the strings in string theory, which says that each and every elementary particle in this universe is made up of tiny vibrating strands. Then we have the multiverse, uh, and then we have the Maneuver's theory in quantum mechanics. and many such theories. It is not that we lack the technology to detect this stuff, but it just might not be possible to detect these. Now, since we have understood what physics is, we shall move to a more important question. That is, why should you learn physics at all? Why should we learn 
dos clics. Now, the reason why I went forward into learning physics is that physics is full of mysteries. There are many great mysteries in physics, but I will give you one of my favorite examples, which is the mystery as to how gravitational charges are equal to the inertial masses. Now, what do I exactly mean by this? If you have studied the Coulomb's law, uh, then you will know that the Coulomb's force is given by this between two charges. So let's say you have, if we have a charge Q1 and if we have another charge Q2, which are separated by a distance R, then the force between those charges are, is given by the Coulomb's law. Similarly, actually we should have gravitational charges. So if you have two masses, I won't say masses, but let's say we have two gravitational charges M1G and M2G. And they are separated by a distance R. Then the force of gravity is equal to the universal gravitation constant, the product of those gravitational charges divided by r squared, similar to the Coulomb's law. But experimentally, what we find is that these gravitational charges are actually equal to the masses. Let's say if this has a mass m1 and this has a mass m2, then the gravitational charges would exactly be equal to the inertial masses of those bodies and nobody really understands why. Moreover, if you are a physics student, then you will also have to learn a great amount of mathematics. I won't say as much as a mathematics student is learning, but a great fraction of mathematics you will have to learn. Also, you, if you are planning to become a theoretical physicist, then you will also have to learn programming. You will have to learn Linux, you will have to learn machine learning, and many more programming languages, depending upon what field of physics you are going to choose in your near future. So that's it, guys. I, in this video, I wanted to explain what is physics and why should you learn it at all. And I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.